Hello and welcome to Rob's Not So Retro Reviews. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to take a look at a more modern game rather than a retro one which I normally tend to focus on. It's also going to be a more loosely scripted video rather than the heavily scripted ones I normally put out. And this is so that I can make the videos quicker and basically put out more content on a more regular basis. So today I want to take a look at Little Nightmares. It's out on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. It was developed by Tasia Studios and it was published by Bandai Namco. Little Nightmares is a cinematic platformer with stealth and horror elements sprinkled in. Lots of people have said that it's quite similar to the Play Dead games Inside and Limbo, and I can definitely see the similarities. It's going for a similar tone and it's the same style of game. I would say that if you loved Inside or Limbo, you would definitely like Little Nightmares. The story of Little Nightmares is given to us through symbolism and imagery, meaning that a lot of it is down to interpretation. Some people like this and some people don't. Some people would rather the story be given to us through cutscenes and dialogue, but personally I'm a fan of this type of storytelling if it's done well. The way that I was perceiving this story is as sort of a criticism of the class system. So you symbolise the lower class with you being so small and starting off in a prison area, and you're working your way up through the higher classes, eventually reaching the highest class. But along your journey the higher classes are trying to stop you and kill you, or maybe even use you to the advantage of the higher classes, in order to further their own gain. I don't know if I was looking at it too simply, maybe I was, and I have to admit certain parts of the game don't work using that theory, but hey, that's the impression I was getting from it, and that's the joy of having a game like this, that you can come up with your own theories and interpretations as to what the game's about. Either way, personally, I don't feel like Little Nightmares manages to pull together the story quite as well as games like Inside and Limbo do. It feels like it's tackling too many themes, and because it's trying to do so much, it doesn't quite pull it all together and tie all the themes together properly. I don't know if that's just me, but I feel like when a game tries to do too much, there's more of a chance that it can fail at what it's trying to achieve. Whereas with the simplicity of Limbo and Inside, it sets out to achieve one theme and nails that perfectly. However, Little Nightmares is getting DLC soon, which might expand on its themes more and tie everything together better. But I don't think you should have to rely on DLC released after the game in order to properly wrap up the base game's themes. The gameplay in Little Nightmares basically consists of three sections, the platforming sections, the horror sections and the stealth sections. In the platforming sections you'll be jumping over obstacles, solving simple puzzles, and just generally trying to manoeuvre your way to the next section of the game. The stealth sections occur when you come face to face with the monsters and you have to get around them sneakily so that they don't grab you and kill you. And the horror is kind of sprinkled in throughout the entire experience. I wouldn't say that the game is scary but it's definitely creepy and it's definitely tense. The scariest moment for me probably comes right at the end of the game where you're moving around what looks to be like an apartment and you're going up the stairs and eventually you begin to hear the quiet humming of a woman. And as you move around the level the humming gets louder and louder until you reach the source but you don't want to go through the door because of what might be awaiting you on the other side. It's really good and it can't really be put across without having played it yourself. The game's full of creepy sections which also serve as lore implications. So there's a section at the beginning of the game where a man is hanging from the ceiling and under him is a chair and what looks to be like a suicide note. Because this happens at the start of the game, it serves as an excellent introduction to the game's tone, but it also leaves you asking questions. Who is that man? Why did he hang himself? Why is he so tall? And why is our character so small? It makes you want to carry on playing the game just based on what you're seeing in this particular area. The whole game's full of little things like this that leave you asking questions and just wanting to know more about the game's universe, and it's really, really interesting stuff. A big portion of the game is dedicated to you being stalked by the various monsters, the first of which being a blind janitor with long Freddy Krueger-like arms, who kind of stumbles around as he uses those arms to guide himself along in the darkness. His main mechanic is not making any noise so that you can get around him quickly and silently without alerting him to your presence. Then there's the chef characters, who are short but very aggressive people, who want to cook and presumably eat you. The way these characters chop raw meat and rip flesh apart with the bare hands is disgusting, and it's truly terrifying to be spotted by them. Then in one of the more disgusting sections of the game, we've got these hordes of grotesque obese people, that upon seeing you will just want to crawl over to you and rip you apart and eat you. Something about this really unnerves me, the way that they're really still, but as soon as they spot you, they'll just freak out and crawl across the floor at high speeds in order to get at you. It's really, really freaky stuff. How they attempt to grab you when you're above them, but they can't because they're so short and stubby, but it doesn't stop them from straining to try. It's really depressing, but it's also funny and freaky at the same time. 
The character designs are honestly one of the standout things about this game for me. Not only the way in which they're all visually different, but they're all mechanically different. It really keeps the game feeling fresh as you go about completing it. It's also good how each of the new characters are gradually built up rather than just being thrown at you making it feel random. As with all cinematic platformers there are puzzles in Little Nightmares but I actually found these really really easy to complete and they're not really that much of a focus of the overall game. It's more about the atmosphere and the horror than it is about the puzzles. Everything's always laid out in a way that it's obvious as to what you need to do next. If you do get stuck on any of these puzzles I doubt you'll be stuck for very long. So if you're looking for a game with complicated puzzles or traps, this probably isn't the game for you. But if you're looking for a game dripping in atmosphere and horror, this probably is right for you. Even the stealth sections seem a little bit easy. There's always an obvious place where you need to hide, like in a box or in an air vent, and there's only one place to hide at the end of a chase sequence, so it's always obvious as to where you need to go. Perhaps a way to make these sections more tense is to have more than one hiding place at the end of a chase sequence, and have the enemy character searching all the crevices where you aren't there in order to make it feel like they might actually find you. Graphically the game's great, everything looks like it came out of Henry Selick's Coraline in the way that everything looks kind of childish, but disturbing and grotesque at the same time. I actually think this would be a great game to get a younger person into horror. The locations are varied too, with each chapter of the game taking place in a different section that all look distinguishable from each other. If I was to nitpick I would say that very specific textures look a little bit weird, like they've not been placed properly. And sometimes random objects will just suddenly disappear from the game world, which brings you out of the experience a little bit, but like I said, this is a nitpick and it hardly ever happens throughout the game. The animations for the player character is great, but the animations for the enemy characters are even better. It really feels like each enemy has a personality of its own. For example, I love how the chef character attempts to grab you when you're up on a shelf, but can't reach you because of how short and stubby they are, but it doesn't stop him from trying. The sound design throughout the entire game is absolutely amazing, really really top quality stuff. In particular when you're being chased by the monsters, the sound design really kicks into full gear and it makes the whole thing seem really really tense. But even the moments when you're hiding and just watching the characters walk around breathing and just grunting to themselves seem really really tense just due to the fact that the sound design is really that good. I love how each character has their own unique music cue that lets you know when they're nearby, but also lets you know when they've spotted you. The chefs have a trombone-like instrument play whenever they're nearby, and this really adds a lot to their character and personalities. So you might be asking, if the story, gameplay, graphics and sound design are all that good, what's actually wrong with the game? Well in my experience of playing the game, the controls and the general physics do let the game down quite substantially. It's difficult to describe, but when you try to do a simple action like light a candle or grab something or climb up something, it can feel a little bit clunky and sometimes the controls just don't respond. It never felt like I had full control over the character, and this can be quite detrimental in a platformer because of the precise controls that you need to have. The grabbing feels like it should lock on from a longer distance, the climbing feels a little bit wonky when you move left and right rather than just climbing up and down, and lighting candles and picking up objects sometimes outright just doesn't work. There's also a problem with me in this game and judging depth. Because the game's 3D but the camera is positioned like a side scroller, it can be quite difficult to judge exactly where you are in 3D space. You aren't locked into 2D planes like in Little Big Planet, and you have full three dimensional control over where your character moves in the foreground and background. But because of this, I found it difficult on several occasions to properly line myself up with things in the background. So things like jumping for a rope or even something as simple as walking upstairs. I found to be a bit clunky. Having criticised this though, I've got no idea what the developers could do about this problem. The only solution I can think of is moving the camera slightly more up so you get a more top-down view of the action taking place, but then doing that would ruin the side-scrolling feel that the game has, which they were obviously going for. Besides, this doesn't happen that much in the game anyway, and it's more of a nitpick than anything else. Something that I did find to be a problem is the load times. They can actually be really bad, and I'm not sure why. It's not a long game, it clocks in at around 2 hours, yet to complete the game you have to go through approximately 7 load screens. This wouldn't normally be too bad, but each of the load screens are a little bit too long and can bring you out of the experience slightly. Not only that though, but the game has to load every single time you die, which can make dying and repeating sections all the more frustrating. Another small gripe of mine, which admittedly won't be a problem for most people, is that there's a trophy for completing the game in under an hour and without dying. 
Now I'm all for difficult trophies like that, but this game just isn't suited to that style of gameplay. If the trophy was for completing it without dying, that would be fine. Or if the trophy was for completing it in under an hour, that would be fine. But both of them together, it makes it feel a little bit unfair. The reason for this though isn't because the game's hard, it's just that the controls are a little bit unpredictable and you can just die due to that rather than being at your fault, which as you can imagine, if you get to the end of the game, would be incredibly frustrating. What they should have done with this trophy is made it so that you could do it chapter by chapter rather than doing it in one whole chunk. This is what Oddworld New and Tasty did and that worked perfectly. Like I say though, this is a small issue and I doubt many people will care about it. But I wanted to bring this up anyway as I feel that it's slightly unforgiving and it makes it so that the game developers are almost bringing attention to the fact that the controls to the game aren't good. Overall I would give this game a solid 7 out of 10. If the game's controls were slightly tightened up in a future update it would definitely be an 8, but as it stands it's a solid 7, which is still really good and I still highly recommend the game. What we have here is a really good game that's let down by a few niggly issues. The slightly unfocused story, the controls, and the slightly weird camera angles. All small issues, but nonetheless have an impact on the game as a whole. However, it has a ton of memorable moments, it's creepy, it's tense, and it's got a really good horror atmosphere. It's also quite cheap, and it has a retail version which comes with the game's soundtrack, which is fantastic. I would highly recommend you give this a go and don't get put off by the few problems that I've mentioned. If you're a fan of Limbo or Inside or maybe even the Oddworld games, you should definitely give this a go. It's got a similar vibe and you'll enjoy it. As always, thanks for watching my review. I'll be doing more of these shorter and more informal reviews in the future, so if you have any recommendations of what to play next or any feedback on this format, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, bye!